Jeff Friedman, welcome. Thank you, Dennis. When you first started in this, this strange business of ours, what was the lighting process like? It was obviously very different to what it is now. Dave and I both joined African Theatres as apprentices in, as electricians. And during the day we had to work, electrical work, and at night we had to work in the theatre. Mm. And it was so completely that you didn't, you couldn't see the stage because the, the lighting boards were on the side and they would always put flats and curtains and stuff. You couldn't even see the stage, you couldn't see your effects, what you were doing. So you sat there and the uh, same thing, go cue, and you push all these levers up and down and you never knew what was happening on the stage. Extraordinary. Yes. And uh, this went on for well, years and years and I, 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 couldn't, I, I could only visualise what kind of effect we were doing, you know. But it, it, oh, it was such a thrill out of doing it that uh, and the next day after a while we went back to work and I was working with some builder and, uh, we were, and I was telling me how great it is to be working in the theatre and putting leaders and doing lighting effects and he said to me, look here my boy, you see this wall that I'm building over here? He says, you come back in 20 years, this wall will be standing here. What do you do at the end of the show? You put off your light switch. You've got nothing to show up there. Oh, don't tell me. Come on. You know? And, you know, but I wasn't quite this. I said, oh, well. And it's quite right true. With it. But the whole theatre is like that. I mean, the artists, they perform, they get applause. At the end of the books, they go home. And they, they go and say, listen, now, uh, now you can you record and come back to things. But there was nothing. Mm. So you did all these wonderful things. And uh, you uh, with nothing to show. Oh, memories. Yeah, memories. I don't know. Plenty, plenty of memories, you know. Now, given that lighting was blind, certainly from an operator's point of view, um, who actually did the lighting and actually planned it all? In no, yes, well, they always had a director, had a, a chief lighting uh, technician, and uh, mainly, mainly the director of the show used to uh, come in and talk. Like, uh, in the early days, we all the shows would come out directly, fully equipped of the company. They bring out their technicians and their lighting designers, the Royal Ballet, the Sattler's Wells, the La Scala Opera, you know, and all these people, all these people brought their own technicians and, and designers and, and we have this, uh, and they uh, tell us what to do. So the new franchise musicals is actually really old? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, okay. because it's all, all been done. And of course the equipment is very different. Oh, the equipment has changed to such, you know, in the whole, uh, when, I, when we first started, when I first, and you used to climb up a ladder and you used to do a spotlight. And the spotlight was made by a plumbing company, Shawman Spotlights, you know. <laughs> and they put a thousand watt lamp in it and you couldn't touch it off, you couldn't do focus it. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was the, the light. And then they went on to the pattern 23s and the 123s and these were marvelous little inventions. You said, gee, look at this. And then uh, to enhance you had the, the gels and the colors and said, gee, what's happening around here? You know, mm -hmm. what a wonderful world we're living in. The olden days. Tommy Willow says, you know, we used to go on tour and we used to have to uh, footlights, we had to dip lamps in them, in the covers, so that we had a, co a coloured footlight oh, wow. and, and, and all the light patterns you put in coloured lights and they had to dip it into a dip to get the colour, you know. Okay. Never mind these wonderful gels that, that they've got out nowadays, you know. And then you must have used real gelatine as well. Uh, and real, real gelatine, never mm. mind all this uh, modern... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, when I was uh, in the, in the store, too, uh, completely in as we didn't know anything. But I never went in the world, but I had the whole world coming to me. You know, we had shows coming from England with a ballet and old big company, from America, uh, we had shows coming out from Australia, from Germany, from Japan, you know, and mm. all these, and, and from every one of them, they brought their own technicians with, and we picked up all these little things. Right. You know? okay. Italian so, opera company, they used to do, you know, in two days, three, five days, you do five different operas. But I hang, well, you can miss a day, mm. and set up and light it the next morning, do it that evening, you know. Do one night, Traviata, the Hame, Corsi from Tutti, the Lisa de la Moor, you know, so, and it became well, like the old company too. They come in with some live stream, Hamlet, or Tarot, and he said, gee, you know, I'm learning words, even though I live in Venice, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Now, can I, can I ask you, just to go back to, to the rigs of, of, of that time, um, what did an average rig look like? Average rig was, you had front of the house some spotlights, you had floats, footlights. Right. You had what they call the effects pattern, spot, which you had, if you're lucky, you had 10 or 12, 14 spots. The rest of light patterns, 
and a ground row and a flat bar. Right. Sometimes you, uh, on the side you have dips, which was uh, we call half watts, which uh, was a built up unit with three floodlights under the different colours, which you could move into the wings and into the, into the scenery. And that was, uh, that was the, your rig. Right. And for that, they used to get wonderful effects, you know. You come down and you could fade into a go into blues and go into red, you know? right. and full of finishes and blackouts. Right. And control wise, you were. Well, no, control wise, the dimmer, the Y1 dimmer was a work of art. You know, mm -hmm. it was, you had to push up and down. And to set them, it was like when you're doing a, a, so many dimmers you've got, and the director is saying now, uh, bring so and so up to a half, and so and so to a quarter, and that one to three quarters. Now, to get that back to where you're going when you're doing the actual physical cue, it's almost impossible. And I say, when you wind the wheel and you unclip it at a half and a quarter, and then as you go along, you just gently bring it up to where they're supposed to be. But uh, our friend Tommy Woodward was with the cushion at that point time. He used to, the good idea to say, uh, Can you go to half? He said, Okay, that's at half. He says, Can you bring out a point? Now he's got the others at half already. He hits the board and says, How's that? <laughs> and then he says, Can you bring up another point? Yes. He said, how's that? He said, okay, leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he took cheating to a new extreme. Uh, he was, no, he was. Mm. He was, but he was a marvelous old man. We well, wanted to be doing the, the Joan of Arc and doing the burning scene. And uh, he was sitting side lights on the stage and the director said, Tommy, can you get, move that light just a little bit more off? He said, I'm getting a bad angle. So Tommy says, how's that? And he moved it a bit off. And he says, how's that? And he moved it a bit further off. And he says, how's that? He says, oh, that's fine. So Tommy says, come up here, please. And the doctor come in. Tommy's outside the stage door. <laughs> 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 and he's all in the room. He says, oh, really, how's that? And he says, great, huh? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just want to explore the Grandmaster Control a little bit more because it's something not many people are familiar with. Um, can you talk me through how a Grandmaster worked? Well, it was a, a work of art, really. It had uh, all these different dimmers, and some of them you engage with a, a clutch, or there was a little groove in, in the wheel, which was to the main wheel is to control the whole board. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you could either engage whole sections, like uh, the light batten section, the dip section, the spot behind this. Uh, but then each one was individual again, which you had to then clip into the main section. So when they turned the wheel, it would engage. And as it was going up, if you had a setting, you had to disengage these things. And it was, uh, well, it was, uh, became, I became an expert in it. You know, it was, well, you it was, had a reputation. No, it was, it, it just became, you became your own computer like. You know, you had to say, gee, I've got a. Uh, Put these things over here, I've got to do, and I have a piece of string over here, and a hand over here, and you pull this over here, and then you can use your head to push up the thing at the same time, but at the same time you've got to turn the wheel the whole time to get the, the things mm -hmm. to come up. And then if you have a, a, a blackout, you've got to come back into a new scene, you've got to pull the main switch out, run the wheel down, get everything to go out, unclip what you don't want again, put the main switch in, and then come up with your new state again. That was a, it was quite a business, but you could you know, do a 50, 60 uh, lighting cues uh, on the, it was just part of your thing, so hello, you know, how am I going to do that? Because sometimes uh, they came so quickly, the cues, that you didn't have time to uh, prepare for the next one. What's interesting is that's what we now call a tracking board, rather yes, than a preset, preset board, because right. you're focusing yeah. on what's moving. Moving, yeah. Mm. That was a... Uh, so when you moved over to preset boards, did you find oh, no, they couldn't that, do? It, it was a completely different thing. Going into the preset, well, you said, no, this is a, giving you a whole new thing that you can do. Mm. So uh, just added, but uh, I say I, the, the grand monster was a work of art.